Grip is the next fundamental that you should approach in your checklist. And your grip is perhaps one of the most important uh, fundamentals simply in that you're talking about the contact that you have on your gun. Now we all need to remember that holding an explosion in your hand is not a natural thing. None of us are really eager to do that until we learn to train ourselves to accommodate that explosion in our hands, to learn to let it be natural, and that's why this takes so much training. There's a lot of argument about grip. Some people say you should be 50% grip with this hand, 50% grip with this hand, while others say you should be 70% with your dominant hand and only 30% with your non-dominant hand. I say that's a bunch of crap. Throw it all out. Does it make any sense to you that if you're holding a bird in your hands that you're going to hold tighter with one hand than you would another? If you crush that bird, it's going to die. If you let it go, that bird is likely to fly away from you, causing you much frustration. In turn, 100% grip, 100% grip. Having a good grip on the pistol means having good control over that bore axis whenever that shot breaks off. Grip also means extending that pistol far out. Lock your elbows out so that you can absorb that recoil. Stretch out from the back. Controlling that recoil starts in the grip. Understand that one of the biggest things that you can do is to over grip with one hand and under grip with the other. If I push and put most of my grip into this hand, I'm contracting all of these muscles. That's going to push my shots left. If I'm doing the opposite with the other, it will push my shots right. This is where finding that balance in your grip becomes very, very important. An absolute no-no is white knuckling on the pistol. There's no need for you to grip down and kill that pistol. It's not going to get away from you so long as you have a good grip. A good way to check and see if someone's gripping too tight is to actually check this meaty portion of the hand while they have their grip and they're extended fully out. If you're unable to pick up that excess skin that's in that meaty portion of the hand, you need to convince them to relax that grip a little bit so that you can pick that up, okay? The meaty portions of our palms should contact each other whenever we have them gripped around the pistol. Limp wristing specifically causes a type 2 stovepipe malfunction. For shooters that aren't experienced with clearing these malfunctions, it can be very frustrating and time consuming on the range. You don't want to limp wrist the pistol. All of the space should be sealed up in between the meaty portion of your grip on your, your hand and the back of the pistol. So your grip starts right here as you go to the holster. I'm ensuring that I seal up all of that space in between the meaty portion of my hand and the back of the slot. Come straight up and out of the holster. The support hand comes up underneath the trigger guard. My fingers wrap completely around my dominant hand. And I'm actually squeezing these fingers in between the palm of my other hand. I acquire my grip. We talked about the meaty portions of our palms locking into place so that they can't move from one another. You take the thumb and you can either stack it along the slide here or for some shooters they may prefer to cross their thumbs over in this manner. I prefer to leave my thumbs up on the frame itself so that I can use the thumb to drive my pistol towards a target in a point shooting engagement. 